Well, welcome. Um, we're delighted you're here. This has been a wonderful turnout. And I'd like to thank Noel Latif and the board of the Foreign Policy Association uh, for, <laughs> for their interest and their support in this endeavor. Um, and McGraw-Hill. Thank you very much, McGraw-Hill, for hosting us. I am Joni Sherbo, and I'm going to present our panelists to you and a few remarks about our topic. I imagine that some of you wonder what we're even doing talking about the arts and foreign policy. I can surmise that you're questioning this. How can the arts really affect foreign policy? How can it contribute to warring parties across the globe? And how can the arts actually have any impact in some of the real challenges of our, of our times? Well, in fact, some of you might even wonder why is the Foreign Policy Association ventured into this field? They're all good questions. Let me respond by invoking a little anthropological insight. The arts are and have been constants in human life since the Paleolithic era right up until the present. We are an artful species, meaning that the arts are part, are an integral part, of our individual and our societal DNA. Since time and memorial, the arts and arts exchanges have gone on between tribes, communities, societies, and nations. And they are today. Now, arts exchanges have, can be used, or the arts can be used for a variety of purposes. They can be used simply for entertainment purposes, just to share fun. They can be used to advance creative endeavors. Think of fusion music or world music. They can foster cross-cultural understanding. They can create goodwill between leaders. I'm reminded of Madeleine Albright's pin collection. Most of those pins have come from various people in the foreign services across the world. They can create, they can advance a global ideology such as democracy. Uh, during the Cold War, our State Department used jazz ambassadors to, to talk about democracy, to talk about American way of life, including our downsides. And they can also be used to solve social issues like cattle theft, hmm? women's rights, poverty, and refugee displacement. And today in the United States, there are a number of entities that are involved in this work. Our commercial arts, meaning our movies and our popular music, are perhaps our biggest cultural ambassador in terms of global outreach and financial impact. And while their popularity is manifest, sometimes their welcome mat is not particularly, they're not particularly well received amongst some societies, but in general, they're an extraordinary uh, way of introducing America and some of our arts to the world. Our federal, uh, at the federal level, our State Department, our Broadcasting Board of Governors, our National Endowment for the Arts, all use the arts as tools of cultural diplomacy. And many state, regional, local governments are also, have, also have international outreaches. Select foundations, such as the Robert Starling Clark Foundation, uh, do support the international arts, and Clark was certainly a leader in this recently. And large non-for-profits, such as the Brooklyn Academy of Music, smaller non-for-profits, such as the Battery Dance Company, which you'll hear from, are involved. And as well, transnational organizations like UNESCO, educational institutions, citizen diplomats, and even what we now call netizens. Netizens, these are people who are working exclusively on the net, can be involved in international cultural exchanges. Yet despite the many entities that are engaged in these efforts, in our country in particular, these, this work is not well supported. That said, in our increasingly globally connected world and fractious world, it demands that we be, learn to live together in greater harmony on this, our shared planet. And the arts can help us in this respect. They can help us with social problems. They can help us bridge gaps between peoples. And our panelists are going to show you how. And most importantly, they are also going to show you how or tell you or suggest to you how they can do so more robustly if and when we are able to track the impact of our work. Increasingly nowadays, funders, policymakers want 
measurable outcomes. That is, they want to know how, when, where, under what circumstances have international arts exchanges actually attained their goals or not. <laughs>